This is an introduction to what we're going to be covering in this module. So the first thing is we're going to do a quick overview of Node.js, just kind of describe what it is, some quick background information. Um, it's not certainly a tutorial on Node.js, so we're going to learn a lot of that as we go through the course. We're going to see how to install Node.js, so it's a very straightforward installation to get it up and running. Then we're going to create our first Node.js server, so you'll be surprised at how quick you can actually spin one of these up. Next is an overview of MongoDB. So we're actually just going to the MongoDB website and look at some of the documentation and the graphics they have there to give you a quick overview of how MongoDB works, how it's a little bit different from relational databases. Then we'll set up our MongoDB Atlas account. I already have one set up, but I'll go ahead and uh, provide the steps and the flow of how you actually do that on the MongoDB website. So that is a quick overview of what we're going to cover in this module. Let's go ahead and get started. We're going to do a quick overview of Node.js now, just kind of looking at the architecture of Node.js and how it's used in applications or a lot of common applications, and specifically how we're going to use it. So let's start with Angular, which is something that a lot of people here are probably going to already be familiar with. And it's also what we're going to be using to build out our UI. So when you create an Angular application, you have several components that you will usually begin creating. So one, of course, is going to be the UI. There's going to be different services in the back end, maybe to a, a MySQLite database um, or some other kind of storage or some other interactions that you may have going on to retrieve data, process data. Um, maybe it's calls to other APIs that you're using. So somewhere you've got your business logic layer. And then also you may expose a bit of an API for users to call that don't need a UI. And all of this is actually wrapped up inside of Angular. So you kind of have this block that is your application and you can't really take these pieces apart too well because they're a little, a little bit more tightly integrated. And for a development team, that can cause some problems because maybe the integration is so tight, and it really depends on how you structure this application, but it can be so tight that it's difficult to check in code and let people work on different areas without breaking the build. So where does Node.js fit into all of this? Well, let's go back with our Angular application. So we have the core component of Angular that's going to glue everything together for the application, or at least when we start thinking about the upper layers of the application and getting close to the UI, it may in fact look something like this. So we do have that UI. Again, that is going to be inside of Angular. That is a core component there. So that part doesn't really change. Now, the services and the APIs we're exposing, these other components can go off onto Node, which is just going to serve them. It's a server that's going to serve those pieces there and expose them and make them available. So we all flowed that from Angular. When we want to expose an API, it can come straight out of Node. We don't have to worry about coding it up inside of Angular itself. We also have the services that we can handle on the node layer. So this is going to be maybe a middle layer or a lower level data layer that's going to handle that kind of logic. And also Node.js, it's, it's a server. And what it does is it takes JavaScript that you are already familiar with and makes it available in machine code. So that's part of what it does. And you don't have to run things in the browser. So when you're doing Angular, this is getting shipped to the browser and running inside of the browser's JavaScript engine. Node.js basically takes the JavaScript engine that is inside of browsers and runs it without a browser. So it doesn't have a UI. That's why we're using Angular to provide the UI component. But remember, our application is going to be structured with a back-end app and a front-end app. The back-end app can just use Node with no web browser. And again, we're typing in JavaScript. So how does it process this JavaScript? There's no browser engine, no JavaScript browser engine. It uses the Node.js engine to process JavaScript. So again, this is just a quick overview. We're going to see a lot of this hands-on when we start creating our application.
We're going to see now how to install Node.js. So this is going to be a very easy installation. Just go to nodejs.org, and this is the home page. You'll see this, and it's going to display your OS version. What you want is the LTS version. So right now I've got the 8.11.1. Download that and double click and run the installation for it. It's just a normal kind of installation. Once it's installed, I'll show you next how to figure out which version you have on your desktop. Okay, so at the command prompt, all you have to do is type node dash V and that's gonna give you the version. So you can see here the same exact version that we looked at on the website. Next, we'll see how to create a Node.js server. I'm in Visual Studio Code and we're going to now create a Node.js server. So I've got two folders here. I'm going to be working in this Node.js underscore test folder. What I wanna do is create a file, a JavaScript file. And I am just going to go ahead and call this server. And down here, you can see my terminal. I'm actually inside of that Node.js server. So if I ls this, I can see I just got my one file. What we're going to do first is create a function that's just gonna log out uh, some information. We're gonna pass a parameter into it and just see how to go ahead and start up a Node.js server or actually interact with Node. And this is gonna be a simple log interaction. Then we're gonna create the server we can actually look at in the browser. So I'm going to start with a function and this is going to be called say hello. I'm gonna pass in a parameter just to make it a little more interesting. And then we're gonna have our console log. And I'll just use that parameter. And that's it. I'll save that. Okay, so we're not done yet because if we try to run this, nothing's gonna happen. And the way to do it is just to do node so this is the executable i'm calling the node exe here and passing a parameter which is server.js and if i do that you can see here we get a quick return back so what we need is a call to the function and i am going to pass whatever i want this thing to say like that all right so let's go ahead now there you go so you can see here our output okay so that is a simple way to interact with Node. Now we're going to go ahead and create a full-blown server that's going to be listening and sending back responses. So what I want to do is gain access to an HTTP module. This module is gonna allow us to create our server. I'm gonna put the reference to this inside of a variable that's gonna go through a require. Okay, so there we go, we have that. At the bottom down here, I'm gonna call it. So I'm gonna call this variable, I wanna do create server. There is a parameter we're gonna pass, and then we're also going to listen, and we're just gonna listen on port 3000. Okay, so now for that parameter, we're gonna create a function. We'll pass that function into the create server. And we can just call this on request. We're gonna have two parameters. These are coming out of nodes. This is kind of a little bit of boilerplate code right here with these parameters, so that we do have access to our request and our response if we need it inside of here. We're gonna make use of the response. So we're listening, a request comes in, we're going to send them back something because this is going into the browser. So the first thing we're gonna have is a right head. We're gonna set the content type to text plain because we're just gonna output a string into the browser. So we want a right head and in here, we're gonna do a 200, which is okay. It means we are sending back a, a good response. We're gonna have a key value pair now. So the key is content type, and the value is gonna be text plain. And just terminate that. Okay, so now for what we actually want to send back that's gonna display, we're gonna write, and this is just gonna be hello world. And finally, we're done now. We wanna just terminate this so that the response is terminated. Go ahead and close that. Just going to clear the terminal. And one last thing we're going to do inside of our create server. So remember we have that parameter we're going to pass, which is actually going to be on request. Our function, so that our function will run and it's going to listen and we'll process that whenever we get a request. All right, so let's go ahead and run this. We have node 
server.js. And you can see here, we're not getting any feedback because we've not put anything in here to give us any feedback. But let's go to the browser. All right, so here we are. And I am gonna do localhost. And you can see there, hello world. So what if we do want some kind of feedback? I'm gonna control C this on the terminal, stop our server. We can add some logging. So let's see, we can go ahead up here and do something like console log listening. All right, save that, run. And let's go to our server, just do another refresh. So that is fine, and there we go. All right, so that is how to create a Node.js server. And to stop this, just Control-C, and that will terminate the server.